Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today's video is a follow-up of yesterday's video where we talked about the Intel processor exploit. Now in that video we covered much of what we knew at the time and that was that major operating systems were getting patched or had just been patched to solve a potential security issue with Intel CPUs. We've now learnt this issue also extends to a few select ARM processor architectures but AMD still appear to be mostly in the clear. There are three variants of the exploit and AMD was vulnerable to one of them, the bounds check bypass method, but this can be solved via an OS update and shouldn't come at a significant performance cost. The other two variants though, they don't appear to impact AMD processors due to the differences in architectural design. Now, in yesterday's video, we looked at some testing done by Phronix and it was the main reason I went ahead with the video at the time as we had some real numbers to talk about. At the time, only the Linux operating system had received the update addressing the exploit and Pharonix benchmark performance before and after. They found some pretty crippling performance for the server-related tests using the Core i7 8700K with a Samsung 950 Pro NVMe storage device. They then followed up with a Linux gaming test and looked at half a dozen titles and mostly found the difference was within the margin of error. So gamers and desktop users looked as though they would be unaffected and I assumed this would be the case at the time, but I promised I'd also test the impact for Windows users as soon as I could. After a late night working on that video, I was up bright and early today for some reason, I don't know why, but it was a good thing that I was because Microsoft had already pushed out an emergency fix for Windows users. Windows 10 users should be able to get that update automatically through the Windows update feature. Our Windows 7 and 8 users, well, they can get the patch directly from the Microsoft website today, or they can wait till Patch Tuesday to receive it automatically via the Windows update. The patch titled KB4056892 does have one fairly severe known issue. Microsoft notes that your update installation may stop at 99% and this may show elevated CPU or disk utilization if the device was reset using the reset this PC functionality after installing the KB4054022 update. Anyway, the good news is we can finally retest to see what impact this update has on performance for desktop users if any at all. Now, a few things to note here. I've only had time to test the 8700K, so no older generation Intel CPUs have been tested yet. I've also not checked to see if this patch has any impact on AMD CPUs. The benchmarks you're about to see for the 8700K were all conducted today. They are all fresh and testing was conducted on the same test system under the same conditions. I first updated all my pre-patch data and then applied the patch and retested. As usual, the gaming performance figures are all based on an average of three runs. Now, for the storage tests, I did things a little differently since those numbers tend to fluctuate a bit more. Normally, I again do take the average from three runs, but for this test, I've taken the best result for each individual test and shown that instead. In total, I gave each configuration four attempts to post the best result it could, and between each run, the system was powered completely down and then booted back up. Okay, so that's enough about that. Let's get to the benchmarks. Starting with the storage tests, we have the AS SSD benchmark. And for those tests, I'm using the Samsung SSD 950 Pro with the 8700K. Here we see very similar sequential read and write results. The figures after the update are actually slightly better, though we're talking just a 1% to 2% difference here. Where we see a significant difference is when looking at the 4K read result. Here we see a very large 23% reduction in performance going from a throughput of 44 megabytes per second to just 34 megabytes per second. The random 4K write performance though, well that goes unchanged, so it's just the random 4K reads that are significantly down. Interestingly though, the 4K 64 thread read and write performance is improved with the patch. The write performance here has been boosted by 17%, so that's certainly not bad news, though I'd argue that the 4K read result is more serious. Read access times were also 14% lower before the update, but the write access time is much the same. Moving on, we find that Crystal Disk Mark confirms what we've seen when testing with AS SSD Benchmark. Here, the 4K read performance has been reduced by 23% after the patch. The rest of the margins are within 5%, so nothing really worth noting. The last storage focus test I ran was Addo Disk Benchmark, and here we find something very interesting. These are all sequential read and write tests, so the 4K results here won't necessarily reflect what we saw previously, and while they clearly don't. However, as the file size grows to 16 kilobytes, we start to see a noticeable drop in performance with the update. The drop-off isn't as significant as the 4K read results seen previously, but we are still seeing up to a 9% reduction in throughput. 
The Cinebench R15 score is based on an average of three runs, and here we see a slight variation in performance, but nothing to be alarmed about. The multi-threaded score is reduced by 2%, while the single thread score was increased by a percent. So margin of error stuff then. We see much the same in Blender. The update came in a fraction ahead, but again, within the margin of error. Another render test, this time we have the Corona benchmark, and again, nothing really to report here. So it seems like your rendering workloads won't be impacted. Likewise, your spreadsheets will remain as snappy as ever. We see no improvement or decline in performance here at all. The 7-zip compression and decompression performance looks much the same. Again, this is within the margin of error for this test. Veracrypt also saw no difference for the 1GB and 50MB AES encryption and decryption testing. Okay, so time to get serious with a few game benchmarks. First up, we have the always dependable Ash of the Singularity. And here we see a small uplift in performance after the patch has been applied. Granted, the 1% lower result was only improved by 1.7%, but still, it's certainly not slower. We're also CPU bound for this test using the high quality preset, so not GPU bound. Boosting the quality preset to crazy does result in a GPU limited scenario. And again, we find similar results before and after the patch has been installed. Assassin's Creed Origins was a game I was really keen to check out due to the type of protection that game uses to stop piracy. That said though, as you can see, nothing worth talking about here, apart from the fact the patch has no negative impact on frame rates, and switching to the ultra high quality preset doesn't change anything either. Then finally we have the Battlefield 1 results, and using the medium quality settings at 1080p with the GTX 1080 Ti, we see similar performance before and after the patch. In fact, once again, after the patch has been applied, we do see a very minor improvement. This is again seen with the ultra quality settings, so things look pretty good with the Core i7-8700K. Well, there you have it. As suspected, based on the Linux results that we featured in yesterday's video, our desktop users really have nothing to worry about, particularly gamers. That said, I am yet to test older CPUs, but given the type of workloads we're seeing impacted by the patch, I don't think there's really going to be any issue there with your typical desktop workloads. But if there is, I'll certainly report back with that information. The reduction in 4K performance though for the high speed NVMe drives, that is a bit of a concern. And while this shouldn't impact things like games, uh, any applications that are sensitive to this might show a reduction in performance. Of course, the brief list of applications I tested were all fine and there was no issues there. As we also saw in yesterday's benchmark, which looked at some server benchmarks, that's really where the problem is. So it's a bit of a non-issue for desktop users, but it could be quite a serious concern for data centers and the like. That's not really our area of expertise or interest though, so we'll leave that testing for those better equipped to tackle it. If you have any questions or something you'd like to add to the topic, then please feel free to drop that down in the comment section below. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.